Okay, Rory. Um, first, yeah. I'd like to know a little bit about you. Yeah. Well, where were you born and where have you lived? I was born in Zambia. I left here at a young age. I moved to uh, the UK for a few months, uh, then to what was then Rhodesia. And uh, then after independence, when it became Zimbabwe, I moved to Malawi. I moved uh, from Malawi back to Zimbabwe. Then I went to, lived in France. I went to school in France for a few years and then uh, returned and finished my schooling in Zimbabwe. My school was very disrupted. I went to 11 schools, which is crazy. So I left school very young um, and uh, went into guiding. After a short time in the military, I went into guiding. I did very well initially in the military, but decided it wasn't for me. Uh, and uh, I wanted to go into the bush and work as a guide, ranger, uh, and so on. And uh, I spent altogether five years um, working as a guide, ranger, and uh, in every aspect of, of safaris and wildlife management or that I could in order to get uh, training and experience. And uh, I was licensed under the Department of National Parks and Wildlife Management in Zimbabwe in those days as a professional guide. And um, my passion as in terms of skill has been tracking and believe it or not I see myself as a tracker first and foremost yeah. um, however I'm also a strategist in anti-poaching and that is just I've become that way not through any particular training because it doesn't exist I've tried to find solutions for problems that have arisen in front of me in the last uh, 10 15 20 years that I've been working how did you switch from pro guide to becoming anti-poaching trainer? The poaching problem has become completely out of control. And at the same time as it's, it's gotten worse, the skills and the training that are available to the, 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 the people who have to go and stop the poaching are just not there. Or they're much reduced, or there are not enough trainers. Um, and uh, I also noticed that to this day there has never been a clear comprehensive approach to anti-poaching. It's always been haphazard or it's involved cliches or it's involved um, other training just being adopted. It's never been tailored for this problem and I think part of the reason has been that uh, in the past it hasn't been as big a problem in certain countries and in others, it hit so quick and so hard, they didn't have time to react before the wildlife was gone. In places, you know, uh, in, in very uh, uh, poorer countries and uh, those that, that couldn't do much about it in the 70s and 80s. Um, whereas where it's hitting now, it has been the stronghold. And it's now hitting so hard, it's a desperate situation. And if a comprehensive uh, approach is not uh, developed and applied, it's over. It'll be a disaster. Not just for elephants or rhino, but for everything. Tell me, what is poaching? Okay. There are many definitions, very, le very many legal definitions, but poaching generally is the illegal harvesting of resources from a protected area of natural resources. So whether it's an animal, a part of an animal, a log, a bird, a tree, uh, water, uh, a stone, a rock lying on the ground, it's, that's what poaching is. Could you give a description of the uh, situation of poaching throughout Africa? The situation with regards to poaching in Africa right now is catastrophic. In some areas, wildlife has already been completely wiped out, all the animals. Um, in, in others, you have keystone species have been wiped out. And in other areas, uh, it's on the decline. But there is no place in Africa where poaching is not a major threat. If you look at any part of the continent right now, the biggest threat 
to conservation is poaching. And when I say that, I mean the illegal harvesting of resources from protected areas. Um, there is, there has never been such an onslaught as there is now. The memories of my childhood in the wild and the many years I spent, fantastic years, doing safaris, working with wildlife, working with communities in those areas are the closest thing to how I imagine paradise. To leave that for responsibility, my family and for other reasons, and then to discover that it's being destroyed as fast as you can snap your fingers, it's going, is absolutely heartbreaking. There's no other way to describe it. Do you have any idea on the numbers or the time that, that's left for the animals? In some places it's already too late. The animals are gone. Many, many places that I used to see wild animals in large numbers as a child no longer have them. I can remember distinctly in Malawi on the Tanzanian border the first time I saw poachers. And I saw these people with trucks piled high with meat driving out through a dirt road and I said to my cousin, who are they? And he said, those are poachers. And I said, what's a poacher? He says, oh, they, they're hunting illegally. That area now, there is no animal. There are no animals in that, in that area of Malawi. And those sort of areas, the only hope is that one day they may be reintroduced. The animals have to be reintroduced. But it's, it's very difficult. There are very few figures on the actual populations of animals all over Africa. There are, based on the numbers, the estimates for elephant, for example, in, on the continent, versus the number being killed per day relative to the growth of the population, they do believe between eight and ten years there will be no more elephants. Um, rhino, less, two years. And I cannot walk around for one day without remembering. I cannot walk around anywhere, on a safari or in the park, without looking around and seeing a plant that I used to see them eating and no longer nothing else feeds on. This is a number of them that are only fed on my rhino. Sometimes looking at the ground and seeing the edge of a hippo track and saying, oh, rhino, and then reminding myself, oh, no, we no longer have them. Um, and there's many, many, many uh, reminders every day that they're gone. And that's, for example, there are no more rhinos below the Victoria Falls in the Zambezi Valley, which was one of the l largest populations of rhinos, black rhinos, in Africa. They're gone. West Africa, the, 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 the rhinos are gone. Uh, most, yeah, most of Central Africa, they're gone. Um, but the overall trend is you don't need statistics anymore. You don't need numbers. It's happening before your very eyes. You can go into areas where a few years ago there were animals and there are none today. Um, you can go into some parks, I can take you into some parks, where you are guaranteed to find elephant carcasses lying around, fresh ones, every day. Um, it's, it's, it's just devastating. And it's, uh, it's, there isn't time for a lot of talk and umming and eyeing about what would be the best option. It's something that requires urgent and immediate action. Esther, come here. Step it. Come, hey. So for you, a uh, walk in the bush mm -hmm. is always painful. It's become painful now, yeah. Um, you know, often you're not just, you know, I'll be looking for elephant to observe them and I'll hear a shot or I'll pick up blood spore. Um, uh, in, in one area uh, a few months ago, um, in the space of a week, I came across five wounded elephants wounded by poachers. And at the end of that week, just after I'd left, a friend had to shoot one in self-defense. Tried to, uh, you know, attacked him and a, and a couple of tourists he was taking on a walking safari. They were having a look at, at some elephant, and one picked up their scent, and he had no choice, he had to, he had to put it down. And he found a, 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 a bullet in its side from a poacher. Well, they did. The... Who are the people who are involved in poaching? The people involved in poaching vary enormously. It 
depends on the type of poaching, in other words, the type of resource that's being taken, the reasons that they're taking it, and who's doing the taking. So, in the case of ivory, it's generally for export, illegal, smuggling, contraband, moving across borders, for financial gain. In the case of meat poaching, it can either be out of desperation, in the case of poverty, which is usually not that major a part of it. Most often, it is a hunger for meat. It's as simple as that. People want protein. And it's cheap protein. Bush meat is cheaper than cattle. And people in Africa need protein. The population is exploding. They need it. If you put a plate of food in front of someone, they will first go for the protein before they touch anything else on that plate. It is, if you, if an animal is killed in a national park or near a national park, for example, out of necessity, or it's, uh, it's wounded and has to be put down, and you announce that there's this animal has been shot, thousands of people will converge on that spot. Just the idea that there might be meat. And when you see that, you realize how desperate people are for protein.